today? Forget not all his benefits. Amen. How about that? Amen. Amen. John, you could have picked a better song, brother. <laughs> yeah, we should be loving him more every day, amen, for all that he's bestowed upon us, all the benefits of God. When God gave me the title to this thing, all of you have gone to a job somewhere in your life, you started working. And with that job, you get a benefits package. <laughs> yeah. Some are good, some are bad. But with God, the benefit package is awesome. Amen. And it has no ending. Okay, what you get in your salvation, everybody in here is a born again saint of God in Christ. Amen? Amen. So you are entitled to all the promises of God, thousands and thousands of them. Benefits, we celebrated communion today. With that communion is the blood of the new covenant. Sacrificing is over. Everything in the New, in the new Testament is receiving. Your job is to pray and obey. You realize that's your only concern you should have in your life? Because if you don't, that means you don't trust God and His promises and His benefits that He bestows upon us. That word benefit, it's an act of kindness, a favor conferred. That's the grace of God, unmerited blessings. It means advantage, profit. A word of extensive use expressing whatever contributes to promote prosperity and personal happiness. Whoa. How about that? God wants you to prosper in all your ways, even under your health, even as your soul prospers. He delights in your prosperity. Amen? Amen? Or to add value to a property. You are God's property. And if you are born again and you're possessed by God, you're owned by Him, you're bought with His blood, uh, you became royalty. You became a royal child of God. Yes, amen. That word benefit also means to gain an advantage, to make an improvement. Heck, you went from the kingdom of darkness, eternity, and hell to the kingdom of light in Jesus' name. Amen. You've been transferred yes. from darkness to light. You are under a new covenant. You are under the benefits of God and all His promises of yes and amen in Jesus Christ. You have to see yourself. When we did communion today, it's a completely new creation with God in Christ. You became a new creation, old has passed away. You became an ambassador for Christ. You became the righteousness of God in Christ. You're the redeemed of Christ, the justified of Christ, the forgiven of God in Christ. The benefit package has no ending because your life has no ending. Your days on this earth do, but not your life. You're going to live for eternity with Jesus. Amen? Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to Psalm 103. Oh, we're going to have church today. <clears throat> what a song, Jesus, I love you. When you see all the benefits of God, we're just going to touch on some of it today. But the reason you don't live in them is because you don't speak them. The spoken word is what brings things to pass. If you can meditate on it, that's good, because it goes into your mind, then it goes into your heart. Now you're one with the word. But you don't live in the benefits and the prosperity of God and the health of God because you don't speak the Word of God. Hallelujah. Psalm 103, we're just going to start off with 1 through 5. This is so important. Look how it starts out. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. That means all that watches. And all that is what? Within me. Your whole inner being. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And forget not. All his benefits. He's telling us not to forget them. But you don't know them because you don't meditate on them. Oh, got quiet that all of a sudden. Who forgives all, all your iniquities. Who heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Man, there's seven promises right there. We're just warming up. There's seven promises in four lines. In the beginning of Psalm 103, and there's so much more there. We were listening to Andrew Womack the other day, and one of the greatest promises that God's given you as a benefit of the new covenant is, you will never live in condemnation. For those that walk in Christ, Jesus took condemnation away. If you ever feel condemned, you haven't forgiven yourself. You haven't trusted in what He did for you when He shed His blood for you. Your new creations. There is no condemnation for those that are in Christ that walk according to the Spirit, not according to the flesh. When you're walking with God, there's no condemnation anymore. God will never, ever, 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 ever condemn you. He can't. Because then He can say something, then He can go against His Word. 
Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. Your condemnation is free the rest of your days. That you never even enter your thought process. Oh, but I fell short yesterday. Yes, so and which point? Well, Melissa didn't, but the rest of us probably got some work to do. But the thing is, it's so true, though. You should never feel any condemnation ever as long as you're on this earth once you're bought with the blood. Yes, amen. It's done. He eliminated condemnation. He became condemned. He did. So you never will be. He became forsaken, so you never will be. He became judged, so you never will be. Amen. Mm. Praise God. Hmm. You got the whole wrong image of yourself, how the Father sees you today. The things he just said, oh man, he's going to change this whole sermon around. I can see that. Thank you, Jesus. Now we go down to verse 10, Psalm 103. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. Wow. Isaiah 53, 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we were healed. Jesus took your punishment. What a benefit in the kingdom of God. He was punished so you're not going to be. Every time I read that in Isaiah, those few verses in there, it's so hard not to cry to think of God's goodness. And how much He loves us. We just sang it. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. That should be your song every morning. You want to experience the benefits of God? Praise Him that He took your punishment. That He stood in the gap for you. When you never could do it for yourself. How many benefits? Right there we can stop today. You're forgiven, you're redeemed, you're set free, you're healed, you're whole, you're born again. He, pun he got punished, so you're not. Okay, we're good. Amen. We're good. The benefit packages of God. But it's so important that you see the power of God's Word that's alive in here that wants to manifest itself. And like I said, God's going to manifest His life to those that are willing, like John just said in that song, have you died to yourself? Have you given it all over to Jesus? What's holding you back? Yesterday we wanted to go get a bite to eat. He sends me to the salon. I thought she was getting done early. So much of my thinking. He said, get out of the house and get going now. Go get, take a shower and go. Okay. I get in there. She's working on color. I'm going. Go to stay home and study. Done some stuff. Um, but guess what? We got to mom's late. Somebody was there that needed it. Amen. And we prayed with them. I walked in the door. He started crying. We walked out back. He gave me a big hug. He says, I don't know how God does that with you. How you walk in here. I just got here a couple minutes ago. I was losing my mind. And you walked in the door. And he started crying. Never think that your schedule is that important. Because if you do, it supersedes his plans for you touching lives. God's got it. He's got it. Don't be in a hurry to get anywhere. You're going to get to where you need to be when God gets you there. Stop trying to get somewhere that you can't get to without God. Amen? Amen. Oh, I'm going, to, I'm going to really preach myself. You might be right today, Judy. This might be the day. I don't know. My legs are happy today. <laughs> oh, yeah. I hear that song, Stomping on the Enemy. That's got to be on a CD. The whole world's... The church has got to sing that. Could you imagine if the body of Christ around the world was singing Stomping on the Enemy today? Man, all of hell would be leaving earth. Go oh, away Jesus. Oh, man, take his little demons with him, that cockroach. Verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. Isaiah 43, 25, for his name's sake, he remembers your sins no more. First John 1, 9, if we confess our sins to him, he'll cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Remember something, you are a clean vessel sitting here. God doesn't see anything else. You didn't have it yesterday in God's eyes. And if you're hanging around people that remind you of your yesterdays, find some new friends. That's right. That's right. People love to remind you of what you used to be, and God's gonna He promised you what you're gonna be in Him. Amen. You Amen. cannot have a hope in a future and prosper 
and be like God until you realize something. The people in your life that are not building you and edifying you and strengthening you, why are they in your life? They're not your friends. The devil sent them to tear you down. I don't care how many scriptures they quote you. This book edifies, it builds, and it strengthens us. It corrects us when we're wrong. That's God's privilege. I mean, being our Father, He's allowed to. Amen? Amen. But you should never fear God in His correction because everything He does is in love. That's to keep you walking with Him, to keep you from the evil one. Amen? Amen. God is faithful in this Word. So remember something. Those Scriptures, that's why I said it's gone. They used Easter's from the West because there's no end. It's that He carried Him into the grave. Your sins are completely gone. That's why it says you can go West all your life and you're never going to get to the end of it. You can go East all your life, you're never going to get to the end of it. It just keeps going. It's a circle. It's that far gone from you. So why do you look back? It's quiet when you tell people not to look back. You have no, you don't have a yesterday. You only have tomorrows. Amen? Amen. What we got today to praise, you, praise and worship and exalt God. Today's your day. Make, you're going to make the most of your days here on this earth when you give all your days back to Jesus. Amen. You want to write your own book though, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to get them today. I'm just a messenger. Verse 20, another benefit of God. These are all benefits of God. Amen? Amen. Bless the Lord, you His angels who excel in strength, who do His Word, heeding the voice of His Word. Oh. The angels that are in here with us. Man, when I was back there, Judy got that vision. I got back there. When we were singing all those songs, heaven was so excited. Do you realize heaven worships with us when amen. we worship? Yes, amen. I saw all the angels. I saw the glory. And they were just so happy. They were smiling, going, yeah. <laughs> they worship with yeah. us. Uh -huh. That's right. But they heed His Word. Praise the God. voice. Praise Your tongue. The voice. They heed His Word. What is His Word? Hebrews 4.12. For the Word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Do you realize until you start speaking the benefits of God, your angels have nothing to do? Right. They don't have a thing to do. They're waiting on you. They heed what? In, in verse 20 in Psalm 103, the angels who excel in strength do His Word, heeding the voice of His Word. It has to be spoken for your angels to do something. Mm. So when you're sitting around, you just got your head down, your false humility, oh, just, oh, I can't do this for it. Why don't you get up and start screaming? <laughs> Amen. Start screaming. There's days in my house I'm going through things spiritually and I can feel all hell breaking loose and I just start praising. I just start screaming. And I start, start praising the Lord. It's amazing how quick the atmosphere around me changes. It's not fast. Because they're going to heed your voice. If you are a child of God, born again, sealed with the Holy Spirit, you're going to see in a minute when you speak, you should expect to get the results that Jesus got. Why wouldn't you? Are you all one with God in Christ? Yes. Amen. But when you know that, you know you're not your old nature anymore. You have a new nature. You have God's very nature and power and dominion and authority living in you. Heaven is waiting for you to speak. Not Him. He's a, he speaks to us through His Word. He speaks to us by the Holy Spirit. But He's waiting for you to speak the Word of God because the angels are like this. They came and worshipped with us today. That's why when we come together and we pray, pray for a daughter, we pray for liberty to come back, those angels are already there. The Holy, you know why? Because I know God's faithful. I know God's faithful. He protects His children. He protects them from all evil. Sometimes we make choices that aren't so bright. <laughs> but we learn the hard way. I don't know about the rest of you, but I kind of learned all my lessons the hard way. Thank you, Jesus. Not saying I was stubborn and rebellious, but I was bad. Um, but guess what? He's waiting. I got it the last three days. God is sitting there waiting, going, why doesn't my church, Dennis, speak my benefits? Am I not the Word? Will I not perform what I've said? Can I deny myself? No, He cannot. 
It is so important that you see the Word, the Father, and the Spirit. This next verse proves that they're one. And we just said, the Word of God is what? Living and active and powerful. And it's performing things every second of every day. It has since before in the beginning. The Word's always been alive. The Spirit's always been there. The Father's always been there. Jesus said, I'm going back to my Father with the glory I had before the world began. See, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost were always there. Everybody said, where did God come from? I said, ask Him that when you meet Him. Because yeah. I don't have all the answers. Because actually the answers that I've asked God, a lot of, some of the answers just aren't here. That's why we taught His ways and His thoughts are higher than yours. There's some things we couldn't handle if He told us. Our little brain couldn't handle it. But I thank God I got the mind of Christ because mine doesn't work so good sometimes. But His works perfect all the time. How about that? So I thank God my memory is blessed. I thank God that I'm restored. I thank God that I have His thoughts and His power and His dominion because I do. Do you know that when you speak, God's waiting for you to speak. But how are you speaking? Timidly? You didn't get a spirit of timidity of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Pray that over yourself every day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Looking, God created water. Thank you, Jesus. Amazing how your drinking habits change once you become a Christian, isn't it, something? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. 1 John, verses 5 and 6. This proves without a shadow of a doubt what we just spoke of, the Word of God, the Father, and the Spirit are all one and the same. It's a triune God. They work together. This actually proves it's a triune God. <clears throat> Some people have difficulty with that, but they don't see Him as... Three working as one. Imagine if the body worked the way the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost did, how powerful we'd be as a church. Woo, Jesus. This is He who came by water and blood. Not only by water, but water and blood. And it is the Spirit who bears witness because the Spirit is true. For there are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. These three are one. God is a spirit, right? John 4, 24. We worship in spirit and truth. You got to understand something. What does it say in Zechariah? Not by might or power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. When you speak God's word, the angels heed that voice because you and God are one. Remain in me and I in you and you'll bear much fruit. You're one with God. You're as righteous as the Son of God before the Father. You have the same rights as Jesus has to speak His Word and watch it perform. That's why we don't see the benefits of God in our lives. Because you think that's for other people. There's not a select group of people. Born again Christians all have the same rights with, with the Father through His Son Jesus Christ. There's not one above another. People, we, we, for too long this world has put people in a place where they don't belong. That's why so many get knocked out of the saddle. Just saying. God humbles the proud. Amen? And like I said, we walk small before God. Because then He'll be big in you. And He'll show you where you're seated. you got to get out of your human nature and into the spiritual nature of God. Because that's where the victory is. That's where divine health and wealth and peace and prosperity is. That's where the benefits of God. But if you don't believe He's going to perform that word that's sitting in your lap this morning, He won't. He's not obligated to it. It says, come unto me. Let us reason together. You had sin in your life. I've washed it away. You're now as white as snow. You're purified. You've been made worthy and holy by the blood of Jesus. So when you approach the Father, it says, come to approach me with boldness in Hebrews. Why you go to God so timidly? I don't know. What are you going to do? Yell at Him? I'm sure, oh, He's going to just, oh man, you all upset me. He probably one that made you yell to begin with. Uh, <laughs> Not Kareem, but the river. <laughs> Let me tell you something. God is he's got a finger and he likes to poke. <laughs> God likes to poke us to get the junk out so we get us out of what's left is him. So when next time you scream at God, he's getting something out of you. It's not somebody else around you, it's not their fault. God's trying to get something out of you and set you free from yourself. Amen? Amen. We got to get free from ourselves. God come to set us free. Him whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And until you're free from yourself and you're truly one with God in Christ, you're not going to speak the way God gave you the authority to speak. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Matthew 28. Thank you, Lee. 
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The Word. The Word. The angels. He, the voice of the Word. It's amazing how Jesus spoke so much, did so much, and yet He says, hey, you go do the same thing, and everybody goes, huh? What? Well, that's what He did. No, He said, you go. I'm not looking at me. I'm looking at all of you. He said, you go, do the same things I did. You don't go because you, you look at yourself from a human perspective instead of a godly perspective. He sees you as powerful people. Powerful in the Holy Ghost. Broken from the bonds of darkness. Any chain off your life. He sees you as... Why do you think He endued you with His power? To go home and sit with your feet on the couch? No. To go out and change the world in Jesus' name. It's harvest season. I keep seeing those big harvesting machines. They're massive. I remember when we went to North Dakota to see her dad years ago. I tell you what, them machines up there around them fields, man, they're, they're bigger than this building. The watering system, it looked like it was about an acre across that goes across these massive rolling hills. I'm going, well, the equipment's changed since the little plows they had for the fields. <laughs> so when God said it's harvest time, that's how big He is. He wants to harvest souls through the church. we got to get back to wanting to see people saved and set free. Amen? Amen? You're saved and set free. Don't you dare take your salvation for granted. Matthew 28, verses 18 to 20. <laughs> Before Jesus goes up, He ascends on high. And Jesus came and spoke to them all. All. There's that word all again. When God says all sins are forgiven, all diseases are healed, He means it. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. The end of the age is when the church is taken out. Amen? Amen. Amen. Then the 144,000 go out. Amen? Amen? But guess what? You'll be on your life raft sitting there in the river of life having to get a tan in heaven, amen? By the glory of God. Thank you, Jesus. Because that's swimming time. That's swimming time. Oh, you notice God doesn't use sometimes, maybe, well, if I feel like it. No, all. Back at Psalm 103, all, all sins, all iniquities, all diseases, all Oh, I'll supply all of your need according to my riches and glory. God's got some riches, amen? Amen. You don't have them because you don't believe it. It's part of the benefit package. When you signed on the dotted line in His blood, I'm a born-again Christian. I give my heart to you. I'm here to serve you and to do your will and not my will. You don't speak His benefits because you don't believe they're for you. Oh. I checked this morning. He doesn't separate us out. He unites. We're all a family of one. All the promises of yes and amen in Christ for all those who believe. All those who believe. He doesn't say some. He says for all who believe. Why do you leave yourself out? Why don't you want all that God has for you? Why don't you want to be billionaires so we can build cities and feed the homeless and take care of help these junkies get off drugs and alcohol and gambling and have homeless shelters, get these women out of the streets instead of using their bodies for immorality but for holiness and righteousness? Why doesn't the church have all hundreds of billions and trillions of dollars so we can change every city from darkness to light? It belongs to the kingdom of God. It doesn't belong to the devil. He's a punk. He lost already. He's nothing but a lying, condemned thief. Don't you dare let him into your life and take anything from you. Slap him down. Stomp on the devil like we sang today. It's time for the church to wake up and do some dancing on the devil's head. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All. Now, if it was given to Jesus, what happened when Jesus left? Luke 10, 19. I give you all power. All power and authority to trample serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy. And nothing by any means shall hurt you. All the benefits of God. A benefit of God is you have all power and authority and dominion on this earth here and now. What Adam and Eve lost, Jesus gave you back. He gave you the keys to the kingdom, which is all. It says it's all His power and authority. Why aren't you walking in it? Why aren't you speaking it? Why would things come against you in your life? Why don't you speak at it instead of fighting with it? Oh, 
We want to fight so much. We want to wrestle so much. Yes, we're in a spiritual war, but this is the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, which severs everything, which punishes darkness every time you speak and then believe it. The problem is we don't believe what this says. Satan has been defeated. He's going to swim in a lake of fire. You have dominion and authority. When Jesus walked this earth and He rose on the third day, He says, okay, I'm going. Here. Here's my name. Here's my authority. I give it to you. All of it. Here on heaven and earth. Now rule and reign. I give the earth unto you. Have dominion. What they lost in the garden, we got back through Jesus. Hallelujah. Why aren't you walking that way? Hallelujah. Imagine if we walked around every city in this country and started saying, everywhere the sole of our foot touches, like Joshua, you've given us this land as you swore to our fathers. Because in the new covenant, this whole earth is ours and all that it has. It doesn't belong to anybody but the kingdom of God and all its children. Amen? Amen. That's why the church walks around broke, busted, and disgusted because they don't think God's some kind of cheap God that wants them to just live some phony little pathetic life of having nothing. That is not God's will that you walk like that. It's not in here. He says, I came to destroy the works of darkness and to give you an abundant life. Nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. A restored relationship with the Father through His Son. There's so many benefits to the kingdom of God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> what does it say? Every knee will what? Bow. Bow. And whose name? Jesus. We get saved by no other name but Jesus. Jesus. Amen. The name. You've been stamped. Like when I stamp envelopes with a stamp at home. Guess what? You've been stamped and Praise sealed God. with Jesus. Ooh. Amen. You're stamped and sealed. Your eternal promise of your eternal redemption is in the Holy Ghost. You got sealed. You got stamped, approved, justified, forgiven. You realize that? Your name's in the book of life. It's never coming out. No one can take you from the Father's hand. Woo, Jesus. Psalm 138. Verses 2 and verses 8. He gave me a... Two, yeah, verse 2 and 8. It's a great psalm. It's a sure one. But it's so important when we see the name of Jesus, how high up it really is. We just sang high and lifted up, didn't we? Guess who you, where you've been? You've been lifted up, seated in where? Heavenly places in Christ. Amen. You have dominion. Everything is beneath you. This earth is God's footstool. It's also yours. Oh. You're priest and kings. If the earth is His footstool, it's yours. If you're seated with Him, amen. 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 All right, verse 2. I will worship towards your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above your name. Your word. It's above everything. Because the word is spirit. The word is the Father. The word is the Son. It's all one and the same. First John. It's above. It's never beneath. It's magnified. That's why we lift Him up on high. That's why He said, lift me up. When you lift me up, I'll draw all men unto me. It's above everything. You're seated here above everything. All the nonsense of the world. All the lies of governments and peoples. All the lies of doctors. This little girl we prayed for today, you know who did that to her? The doctors. They gave her stuff that dehydrated her. Put her in an ambulance yesterday. Before you check with a doctor, you check with Jesus. Amen. I'm sorry, they put this little girl in the hospital. Now you know why I don't go to doctors. Mm. Jesus never says I'm going to be sick. He says sickness died at the cross. Amen. And see that I got Jesus living in me? He was never He took all that and he nailed it there. So it can't follow me anywhere. I don't receive that lie, and I won't. I'm not gonna. Nobody can tell me different. I told you, I'm stubborn when it comes to the things God has taught me, and I will not change. Because when the Spirit teaches me something, God has shown me something, and then He confirms it in His Word, it's truth. Amen. It ends there. <laughs> it ends there. I don't know about you, but it ends there for me. Because this is my only hope. See, because up until the point Jesus came and got me, I, I was dying. I had nowhere to go. I hated being on this earth. Now I love every day because I got purpose, I got meaning, and so do all of you. Amen. Because you're here to share Jesus with people. Hallelujah. Your life should be so rich spiritually. Amen. Oh man, be hungry for the things of God. 
Oh, Jesus. Mm. Something's cooking, God. <laughs> Verse 8. Another one of God's benefits. He will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. And do not forsake the works of your hands. Who's the works of his hands? Us. Us. He's not going to forsake you. He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You're fearfully and wonderfully made, and marvelous are his works, and your soul knows it very well. You're his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works prepared beforehand that you walk in them. All these scriptures, see what I'm saying? His works, you're his workmanship. Why see yourself as less than that? He never created you to be failures, but conquerors through Christ. Amen. We're the victorious church, always led in triumph by Christ. Oh, hallelujah. It's time to start speaking your benefits. When you've got a concern, you go to God and say, You know what? You said you would take care of my concerns. Here, they're yours. They're not mine. That's right. Amen. You know what concerns do? That's right. You miss out on your benefits and His promises. You really do. Because now you've made a concern something that He's already taken care of. Yes. He's already dealt with it. It's already a done deal. Right. It's over. It's finished. If God said it, it is. Like I said, go back to what it says. I am the Lord thy God. I can't deny myself. I'm faithful to watch over my word and perform it. Yes. We're going to get into some good stuff right now that really going to shake you up because you're going to see you're the one that's missing in life things that God has for you benefit because you don't speak it. Amen. Jesus did it by speaking it. Uh -huh. In the beginning, He said, let there be life. And guess what happened? Oh, life. The earth. Didn't have any planets. It was covered with water. He said, let the water be separated by dry land. Yes. How about that? Whoop! Here comes your confidence. Thank you, Jesus. That was that big bang thing. Yeah, it was a big bang. His voice spoke. <laughs> <laughs> I got their big bang. God spoke. When He walks amongst you, the heavens will thunder, the earth will shake, and they'll drop forth rain. Because when God speaks, this whole world is going to hear. Remember what he said about Jesus when he got water baptized? This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. When God speaks, the problem is we don't like to hear sometimes. Come on. Come on. Don't be one of those ones God's got to pull you by the ear, okay? <laughs> say, yes, Lord. yes, Lord. You want the benefits of God, you learn to say, yes, Lord. <laughs> Everybody knows this verse. I use it quite a bit. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. In the power of the what? Tongue. Tongue. We have been given under the new covenant the right and the privilege and the authority to speak God's word and watch it perform just the way Jesus did. Amen. You've been given that. That's why we don't have the benefits of God. Speak it. When I pray, I expect God to answer. I don't know about the rest of you. Man, how can you be like that? Really? Because he said so. See, it's not pride. It's not arrogance in me. It's I know He's faithful. I know He is. He's proven Himself thousands and thousands. When I was a heathen, He protected me. Amen. He wasn't obligated to. But He protected me even when I was out in the streets all those years. Amen. God is good. He is faithful. Okay. Good now. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Good report. Good report on liberty. God is so faithful, isn't He? Father, we can't praise You enough for how good a God You truly are. Let Him have that seat. Praise the name of the Lord. 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 Jesus. Jesus is good. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We get a bigger building, they're going to have to have a real good air conditioning system. You're going to be busy on that one. It's going to be hot in that place. The only thing going to be in there is going to be fire. I don't want to do it here. I don't want to worship the Lord. Hey, man. Well, have the crew do it. It's hot, it's hot. I'm still worried. I'm done. We're praying for you to retire from that anyway. you got better things to do for Jesus. Hey, Amen. The youngins can take care of it for you. Amen. Oh, God. Told you it's different in here. I love this place. Do it. We ain't got much time. Amen. Amen. Speaking of time, now I'm going to go through a few verses. You don't need to go there. But like I told you, the problem with your lives is you're not speaking. You're wrestling. 
You're battling. You're doing all that. I ran into a woman that used to be here years ago the other day. She was in line. She turned around looked at me. And she says, that. like I said, one of these days we're going to have a revival right in Walmart because I started praying in tongues, laying hands on her. 30 people going, who are these people? Whoa. Um, but you know what? I looked at her and I said, why are you struggling so hard? She goes, well, I'm I said, why aren't you speaking at it? Uh -huh. I said, the battle's been won. She said, the battle's been won. He's already overcome the world, so why aren't you speaking the word at it? The living word Amen. that is sharp and powerful. When the word in Jeremiah says, say grace, grace to your issues, and it'll be shattered back into dust, because this word is like a hammer. It'll come and destroy your enemy in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus was a disruptor. They called Donald Trump a disruptor. He shattered the Pharisees and the Sadducees, all their religious doctrines. You, this first one is you can't heal on the Sabbath and everything. I love it. He told me that 20-something years ago. I came to destroy religion because all your works are worthless. <laughs> works of the flesh don't please God. Only the Spirit doing the work pleases God. He alone gets praise and honor and glory. Oh, man. Go. Matthew 12, verse 13. Watch what Jesus says in, in the synagogue. Everybody's upset. It's a Sabbath day. Oh my God. And then Jesus said to the man, I get a withered hand. That means there was really no hand. It was probably wasn't even hardly there. It was all withered and nothing. Probably was born like that, okay? <laughs> Remember, death, life, and the power of the tongue. Jesus spoke. Then Jesus said, to the man, stretch out your hand, and he stretched it out, and it was restored as whole as the other. Amen. He didn't jump up and down. He didn't do any of that. He said, stretch out your hand. He spoke. The Word of God spoke. When you speak the Word of God, it will do everything it was sent to do. It can't return to him void without accomplishing and prospering that which it was sent forth to do. It can't return. This can't return back to him void. He spoke. Death, life, and the power of your tongue. The benefits of God are on your tongue. You need to start speaking. Amen? Amen. Matthew 17. <laughs> this is so good. Mm. Man. My whole spirit's jumping here. 17 to 18. Now the... the his disciples couldn't cast out the demon out of this boy, so here comes Jesus. Scratching his head, going, man, you guys ain't learned nothing yet. <laughs> Your unbelief is really bad. <laughs> oh, God. And watch what Jesus says when they bring the boy to him. Then Jesus answered and said, Oh, faithless and perverse generation. They had no faith. They saw Jesus doing all these miracles, yet what happened? How quickly we forget. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? See, he was trying to provoke them. Listen, wake up, smell the coffee. Okay, let's do this. I've given you my power. Amen? Amen. Bring him here to me. And Jesus, what? Rebuked the demon. It came out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. Jesus spoke. The Word spoke. Speak the Word of God. We have that dominion. He's given us that right in His name to cast out demons, to pray in new tongues, to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. He gave it to you. What you got to speak and believe? Oh, man. Oh, man. I had a list of about 100 scriptures. So a lot of the miracles and stuff in the Bible. I said, oh, we'll be there for a while tomorrow. We'll make it on my Monday. I don't think they're going to like that much. It's so important that you realize how powerful your tongue is. I tell people all the time, be careful of your words. Uh, come on. Come well, on. we caught a little bit of TV. We got off meeting last night. Neil Goodfield was on. They were talking about one of the guys in the Catholic on there talking about, you know, how they're going to raise up exorcists now. I'm going, oh my God, they're going to put more people in hell. Here we go. Um, but it was a, he opened up a door into his life. He was raised that way, but he was making fun of it about demons and angels and stuff. He thought it was funny. And he goes, yeah, well, that, that, man, that'd, that'd be cool if it happened to me. Whoa. I looked at that TV, my spirit went, you have no idea what you just said. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Come on. Don't you ever mess with things spiritually you're not equipped to do. 
Yeah, just threw the door wide open. Yeah, he, oh, he, he opened it last night. I went, I, he has no idea what he just invited into his life. I can't imagine what's coming. Hopefully God protects him in his ignorance. He usually does. Because this is real. Who was that? Greg Dutfield. They thought it was funny. They thought it was funny. It's not funny. The devil is real. Yeah, we saw a race car. Me and Ralph this morning pulled in. He had 666 on the side of his race car. No, you know what we did? We prayed for salvation. Amen. I could see, you know what? He couldn't even look over here. He walked around his car with his head down. We're watching him. He wouldn't even look up because they were practicing worship and his head was down. Yeah. He stayed by his car. And we're over there by the window praying for his salvation that God go bring him in. I was hoping he was going to look up. So I said, you need to come in here. God could fix that because all I got to do is speak to it. That's oh. right. That's right. The name of Jesus, every demon in hell trembles. Uh -huh. And I know it and I remind them of it. Oh, Jesus. You are new creations. You are royalty. You sit above and never beneath. You are the head and not the tail. Yeah. Remember that. The devil's the tail. He's under your feet. He can look at the bottom of my feet. That's as far as he's allowed to look. He doesn't want to get under these feet because I'll step on his head. Amen. You know why? Because Jesus gave me that power. He gave me that authority. He gave me dominion. I didn't get it. I didn't deserve it. I didn't earn it. He says, here, it's part of my benefits package. You rule and reign with me now. Oh, hallelujah. you got to start speaking the benefits of God. John 11. Words have power. Prophesy the benefits of God over your life. Spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, financially. So that you're complete heart, mind, body, and soul. Just verses 43 to 44. <clears throat> Everybody knows about Lazarus. Everybody knows the story. In there for four days. Everybody thought he stunk when he smelled like roses. Uh -huh. <laughs> he was dancing in the Holy Ghost in there. They put him in there dead, but that didn't last, okay? Right. God had a plan. Amen. God had a plan. Now when he heard these things, watch Jesus. He cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out bound, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. His face was wrapped with cloth. Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. Jesus spoke. Jesus spoke. What are you waiting for? What are you, you're one with God in Christ. You're the righteousness of God in Christ. Why aren't you speaking the word of God? Would you be magnified above His name? Why aren't you speaking things in the name of Jesus? The benefit packages in here is it's never ending. I haven't even seen all His promises yet. I just keep speaking them. You know why? Because I know they're going to manifest. Because what speaks, your words go two places. <clears throat> What you speak and what you agree with. When you speak out loud, when you're having a conversation with somebody, words go into the spirit realm, not into the carnal realm. Light and darkness. Don't give the devil any food. Don't give him any food. Don't you speak against this word. Because as soon as you agree with the devil, the word, and what's outside, the news or anything else, it was great yesterday. We didn't even turn the news on yesterday. <laughs> because you hear what happened yesterday? No. <laughs> I guarantee I go home this afternoon. It hasn't changed much. No. So, <laughs> no, but do you see what I'm saying though? Do not give the devil any food. The Proverbs say don't add fuel to the fire and it goes out. We have the authority. Jesus rebuked the devil in the garden with the word. Uh -huh. He spoke. It is written. We have to be a church that starts speaking what is written and expect it to happen. Amen. The church has been interceding for a godly government again. God's turning our whole government inside out. Amen? Amen. <laughs> and I'll tell you, those that are still mocking God, He's coming for them. God will not be mocked. When I saw Billy Graham put in the rotunda and God said, they're betting you back on the rock. But there's going to be a great shaking in America because what's happened is nothing compared to what's coming. That's why I tell you to walk in the authority and dominion you have. Tolerate nothing of darkness. Speak at it and demand it to be out of your life. I don't care what it is. 
whether it's financial, spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, what's going on in here, speak this word because it's living and active. It's omnipresent. It's everywhere. And it'll do everything it said it's going to do if you believe it. Amen. Oh, man. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Mark 4. Thank you, Jesus. We're just about there. Thank you, Jesus. Remember what I said? It doesn't matter what it is, how God's giving you dominion even over the fish, the sea, the animals, and the land. And I told you when I was working out in the garage before winter kicked in, I'd have the garage up, and in my neighborhood down there, there's a lot of horse properties and stuff down there. And these flies tried to come in and bother me working out. Oh, no, they didn't. Oh, no, they didn't. Holy Spirit said, you have dominion. Yes. Oh. Oh. So I bound them flies up and I kicked them out. One, one little guy came back again. I said, you just stupid. I get out of my garage in Jesus' name. What? Hey. Flies haven't come in there since. <laughs> well, they go get their relatives. I'll get them too. Amen. But I have dominion over nature. Amen. I have dominion over animals. They have to obey the name of Jesus. Amen. Everything must bow at his name. Like I said, Satan can walk in that door. I'll tell him to sit down, shut up, and learn something. Because that's how little authority he has unless I give him something. First of all, he dares not because that guy this morning, he couldn't get in that car fast enough and leave. Me and Ralph back there praying for the man's salvation. See? Because <clears throat> God loves that man. Yes, amen. I saw a cloud of darkness over him, just having a tall guy. We just saw it. He could just see the, and he was like this. He wouldn't even look this way. He kept looking down, walking around his car, looking in it. He wouldn't even look this way. <clears throat> so next time you see somebody like that, don't judge him, pray for him. Because I was hoping he would look up so we could love him and pray for him. Because he belongs to the devil for now. But we sent salvation to chase yes, him down today. Amen. 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 Mark 4, 39 to 41. They're in a boat. Remember something in the sea? Over there, it's like, I was reading it this morning again, it's like 650 feet below sea level where they were going out in the boat. So what happened is the mountains all around them, the winds would come up within seconds. And the next thing you know, you went from on a flat lake to 20-foot seas because of the pressures. I read that a long time ago and I was rereading it this morning and he says, when I say we're going to the other side, you did a whole teaching there, you're going to the other side. Now you may hit some storms on the way. You may hit some storms. God's saying, we're going to the other side. Let's get in the boat and go. They forgot what he had just, all the miracles he had done already. And his authority. And his dominion. Watch what happens. Then he arose and rebuked, rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still. One little sentence. 20 foot waves were gone. The wind was gone. They were screaming because water was coming in the boat. Oh my God, the world's going to end. The sky's falling. How many of you do that when you hit a bump in the road? Nobody in here could praise God. We're all there. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> what does he say to them? But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Jesus spoke. Jesus spoke. Why are you not speaking more? Because you're speaking nonsense. You're speaking circumstances. You're speaking issues in your life instead of speaking the answer. You're not speaking the victory that God already gave you. He already gave you the victory over everything in this world. Everything you're going to face. First of all, no Christian should ever be fearful of leaving this planet. Your retirement home is already ready. So many people plan for their retirement. I haven't. Because I'm not retiring. I'm not retiring. I asked them about that. When I was a young Christian, I was getting involved with a lot of ministries. And they wanted all these people that were in ministry to sign up for all these retirement plans and everything. And I started praying about that. Going, well, maybe I should do the same. So after me chasing the wind for a couple weeks, he said, um... <clears throat> <laughs> what I do? He says, what did I tell you about making plans? 
You don't belong to yourself. Your retirement plan's taken care of, and you're never retiring. Oh, so, um, when I signed up for the kingdom of God, I didn't realize some of the benefit packages, but I didn't realize I was truly owned by another, and my plans weren't written in his book. See, his plans are, you're going to serve me all the days of your life, and then I'm going to come take you home. Hallelujah. And that's how I'm going to live. Because he's never failed us once in our marriage. He's never failed to take care of us. He's never not been there for us through good times and in bad times. Jesus has always been faithful. Even when we didn't think he was, because we didn't understand some of the trials we've been through. But you know what? It made us better servants. But what it did, it gave us more faith in him to always be there. No matter what it looked like, he's always been there for us. Always. He's always been there. He doesn't know how not to be. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere you are. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So next time you see a wave and a storm coming, speak to the thing. Amen. Amen. You walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It's only a shadow. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Too many Christians sit there and bring out a park bench and a tent and they sleep out in the thing. Uh -huh. Come on. I didn't read Psalm 23 where it says, though I sit down and bake a camp and live here for a while. No, it says you walk through it. Yes. Amen. In Jesus' Amen. name. Stop taking up camp where you don't belong. Oh, Jesus. Oh, we're going to get you now. We're going to finish with Luke 7. This is so powerful. Remember what I said? The word will be spoken and performed and delayed no longer, declares the Lord of hosts. Spoken. The word will be spoken. Amen? Amen. 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 Now this is when they, the centurion, he sent um, people to Jesus because one of his servants was dying. He didn't even come himself. He didn't feel good enough. Never go to God and not feel worthy. Don't ever say that I'm not worthy and I don't deserve. Forget all that nonsense. The blood made you. God bless you. Make sure that you always go to God through what Jesus did. Amen. Because the veil's been torn. The sacrifice has been paid. Yes. You have access into the holiest of holies 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Never will God kick you out. Bless you. In Jesus' name. Verses 6 to 7. Remember something? They sent these people, come my servant Zion. And then Jesus, he was on his way to them. Then Jesus went with them. And when he was already not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him saying, Lord, do not trouble yourself for I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. Wow. Never feel that way with your God. Uh-uh. He washed you clean. You approach Him with boldness and confidence. Yeah, if you stubbed your toe, say, Lord, forgive me, and it's done. Leave it alone. Stop carrying your old stuff around with you. You didn't do it. Watch what, watch what they say. But say the word, and my servant will be healed. Say the word. So when we send the word to people... Expect them to be healed. Amen. Amen. I don't care if they're in the North Pole. You got somebody sick, we get together, we pray, we send the word. Psalm 107 20. He sent his word to heal them and deliver them from all their destructions. Jesus spoke. But what did the centurion say? But just say the word, Lord. And Jesus said, I've not seen such faith in all Israel. That man knew that if Jesus spoke, it would be so. Ooh, Jesus. You're afraid he's not going to perform. There you are. Yeah. You're afraid he's not going to perform the word. How can he deny himself? He can't. He can't. You need to start speaking more. Stop agreeing with what's out there. Start agreeing with the book. Because when you speak it, you send the word into the spiritual realm. The angels who heed his voice of the word who perform the Word. Yes. Amen. It's all about you seeing that book is not as the written Word, but it's living and active, and it's always doing something. It's always saving. It's always healing. It's always setting the captive free. The Word of God continually punishes Satan 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Because when the Word is lifted up on high, it brings glory to the Father through the Son, and it does everything it says it's going to do. Yes. You're not going to have that blessed, prosperous life, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, unless you speak it, unless you believe God's going to do it. Not because of all your goodness, because you don't have any. Amen. Your goodness comes from God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> David said it. Paul said it. In and of myself, no good thing dwells. For God is my goodness. 
Always remember God is your goodness. God is your power source. God is the one who loves you and died for you. God is the one who's empowered you with his very life inside of you. You have all the power and the authority that God had when he said in the beginning. Like I said, you can either create your life by speaking the word of God, or you can speak negative. Oh man, life's this, that. Yeah, yeah. See people that talk negative all the time? Look at their life. It shows. It shows. I'm blessed. I'm highly favored. I'm a blessed man. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Thank God my own. God's strength is what keeps me going, not me. So I'm so happy. I'm telling you. The more he's crucified me lately, the happy I've gotten. How about that? <laughs> I'm not putting all this pressure on myself anymore. I forget all that nonsense. <laughs> what is it? You're wrestling with yourself, some of you, right now. You need to stop. You just need to stop. It's foolishness. It really is. God loves you so much, he doesn't want you dependent on you. But to depend on him. Mankind in all these years has taught us all to be independent from God. You were never created to be independent from Him, but dependent upon Him for your very heartbeat. Adam and Eve, when they dropped the ball, guess what? Now all of a sudden man took off and the human flesh took off. And that really worked out well, didn't it? <laughs> then He flooded the earth. Oh, there you go. How is that working for you? <laughs> then He kept knowing His family. They didn't last long either doing what was right either, did they? But... Then Jesus saw our lostness, saw how pathetic humans were to try and save themselves, deliver themselves, and accomplish what only He can do in a human being, so He sent Jesus. He said, hey, I'm going to put my very life in you so we can get this right. Like I said, you should be so blessed and so prospered and walking in divine health and wealth and peace and prosperity that everybody knows you belong to Jesus because your words will say who you belong to. When you're out in public, your words will tell people who you belong to. Last night we had a divine appointment. I said, well, I got to that salon last night. I said, man, what are we doing here so late? I thought you were getting out of here early. Let's go. Well, guess what? God had a plan. Yes, praise God. And once you realize that, because we got out to the cars, and I just said, okay, let's just go to mom. Forgot about time. It was the grace came on me and just said, let's go. So we went, but you see, God had a plan. I got there early. I could help her clean up and do all that stuff. God had a plan. Because we do it together. You do it together. Two could put 10,000 to fight. But it changed people's lives last night because I thought God was slowing things up, but I didn't know He had a divine purpose and a divine meaning. That's for all of you. Stop thinking you got a better plan than God's. Start speaking the benefits of God. That benefit package, we didn't even touch that today. The key is speaking it. If you don't speak and believe the word, it's not going to come and bless you. It's not. God's not obligated unless you believe it. Amen. But I believe when he says he's going to satisfy me with a long life, I believe it. When he says I'm going to let no plague, no pestilence befall you, I believe it. Yes, amen. Okay, I believe it. When he says you're forgiven and you're redeemed and you're sanctified and you're set free, I believe it. Because I didn't do it, he did it for me. I'm believing what Jesus accomplished for me. And when you speak the finished work of Christ, that's what's going to manifest in your life. Yeah. You have been given all power and authority. Don't turn it back over to anybody else. Amen. Don't give your power and authority to anyone, anybody, or anything. I mean, like I said, if, you, if people are in your life, you've got friends in your life, you're associating with people that aren't edifying and building you and walking with God, if they're close to you and they don't know the Lord, the only thing they are is a spiritual drain in your life. I witnessed anybody and everybody on the streets, doesn't matter to me. But I don't go hang out there. I go into the darkness to bring the light. But I don't go sit with them and hang out and make my friends with them. I'll go be friendly and I'll share Christ, but I don't go dwell there. I bring the light to them. You don't stay in the darkness. You are in light now, not in darkness. Remember something, what you feed is what grows. You got the incorruptible word, the seed of God, which is in your lap in that word. And the more you speak it, the more you meditate on it, the more it goes into your heart. That's how your faith grows. That's how the mustard seed grows bigger and bigger until your faith will look at mountains and laugh. We as the church should be laughing at mountains. What mountain? Amen. And so? And that's it? Yeah. So? A mountain, man. Big deal. Big deal. He already overcame it. Amen. Why aren't you speaking it? Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Woo!
Everybody's going, oh man, I hope he doesn't expect me to do that. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, you do. Remember, we're a family. Amen. I'm just sharing the things Amen. he teaches me with you. And once you get the food, it's up to you to do it. What? Right. <laughs> I'm not a privileged company. The power and the authority he gave me, he gave all of you. Uh -huh. Actually, he gave it to every Christian. Uh -huh. Come on. He doesn't separate people out. He really doesn't. All who believe, He has given all power and authority to you. Why don't you believe it? Yes. You may have had some setbacks in your walk. You prayed for people, they didn't get healed, they didn't get delivered. You know what? It wasn't your fault. You believe, you do your part, let God do the rest. Amen. Amen. Like I said, you can lead horses to water. You cannot make them drink it. Amen. You just can't. Tears are God's incense bowls. He's heard you crying. He weeps with you. Now let it go. You've cried long enough. You've been crying over the same things over and over and over again. And over and over and over again. He has wept with you, but now it's time to trust Him. Now it's time to believe that he's seen and he has heard and he knows. You need to let him heal your wounded heart. That's what's holding you back from really letting go and walking in the freedom that only Jesus can give you. It's part of your benefits package by being a child of God. Your concern is to do the will of God. You've allowed people to put pressure on you. You've invited concerns into your life when they weren't yours. <clears throat> God rules and reigns on high. You are seated with Him. But you can't stay seated when you bring all the concerns of this world back onto you. They're not your responsibility, they're His. God is the Savior of humanity. God is the Redeemer and the Deliverer of humanity. God alone has overcome the world. God alone has destroyed Satan. He alone rules and reigns, now come rule and reign with Him as priests and kings of the Most High God. He has clothed you with His very life. He has filled you with His holy presence and power and dominion and authority. Now start speaking His Word with the authority that He died to give you. He gave it to you as a gift. Speak the promises of God. Prophesy over your own lives. And watch God perform His Word for you. For He is faithful to deliver on all of His promises. Stop trying to earn His favor. He gave you His favor. That's part of the benefits package. Grace, the unmerited favor of God to bless you, to heal you, to make you whole, heart, mind, body, and soul in His Son, Jesus Christ. Stop denying what God has accomplished for you. It's not about you accomplishing, but allowing the life of God in you to manifest itself in your every area of your life, your very being to be restored and whole. He can't restore the years to you because you won't let Him. Stop fighting the work of the Holy Spirit. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God and to receive His goodness and His promises that a yes and amen in His Son, Jesus Christ. For He is not a man that He can lie. What He has said, He will do. And He will not repent, for He has nothing to repent of. For there is no darkness in our holy God. He says, come unto me this day. And allow me to heal you. You're carrying damage from your childhood. And you won't let go of it. It's become a part of you. But it's hindering you. Now let Him have your heart, mind, and soul here and now so you can finally be free. You're living in a prison and I've come to set you free from the prison. I've kicked down the gates of hell so they can't keep you chained any longer. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I'm not going to cut that seat. We'll come a little more closer. 
Do not doubt, doubt God's willingness to heal you and make you whole. Stop doubting a God that died for you. Freely left all glory. Walked sinless for 33 years. Was nailed to a cross and put on a tomb. Descended down. Destroyed Satan and the penalty of sin and death. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you for sending Jesus that came to set us free from the works of the flesh. For we don't live under the law or the curses of the law. We live under grace and truth in Jesus' name. And I just pray a blessing upon everybody here right now of healing in every area of their life. Total restoration of all the years that were stolen from us, O oh God. Bless us, prosper us, lead us in the ways of righteousness and holiness all the days of our life so that our lives are a living epistle that bring glory to your holy, 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 holy name, Jesus. Amen.